We're at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When you're at this place, especially walking right where we're walking, uh, this has got to be some of the best memories of your life. Yeah, no, it really is. Uh, you know, Brian was, you know, an eight, nine year old kid who we'd drag out here to practice and, uh, you know, get him out of school for a day and uh, hang on the fences and watch. Uh, and I don't really think either of us ever thought he'd get the opportunity to race here uh, in, the, in the traditional sense. Uh, and uh, so, you know, the first year, uh, 2012, when uh, Sarah Fisher and Andy O'Gara, you know, put him in the car and, um, you know, to walk through that tunnel and, uh, you know, watch, uh, watch him roll around this place, uh, you know, kind of takes you back. It, it is right now, it's taking me back to those times when he was, a, you know, an eight-year-old kid. Now, Gasoline Alley is right to our, uh, to our right. Like, did you ever get to walk out there with them through Gasoline Alley? Because uh, yeah. that's that's a pretty powerful thing for anybody. To do. No, it is. And, you know, with Brian, um, you know, being the dirt track guy here, and, of course, at the time, Randy Bernard was CEO of IndyCar, and he really saw the value in bridging the gap from dirt racing to the Indy 500. I remember the first time we walked out on, like, a full-fledged practice day, and, uh, and honestly, for as far as you could see, it was dirt racing shirts, you know, and not just Brian shirts, but uh, Levi Jones shirts and... Uh, Justin Grant shirts and you know all these uh, you know all these guys that he got to race with um, you know for his for his sprint car midget career uh, you know, their fan base was represented with Brian out here. You know Brian embraced the fact that he was a dirt guy um, that he came from dirt in fact you know he put together the the Indiana Devil where he you know he raced here on uh, on Sunday, and then uh, they would, you know, get in a car and and try everything they could to get to Kokomo to run a sprint car that night, and and then that turned into uh, bus trips for fans, and it grew from one bus to two to four. But what was cool about it is not only were we introducing or bringing dirt fans back to the speedway, uh, but we were taking speedway fans to a dirt track, and a lot of the comments to this day I get. Um, We'll be in Kansas City racing, and I'll have a family come up and say, "Hey, you know, we were on one of those bus rides, and and we weren't dirt fans then, um, but we we did Brian's Indiana Double, and you know we don't miss a race at Lakeside now, and uh, you know, and so Brian really felt the responsibility of that, um, not just as a driver. Of course, you want to come here and compete and win, um, but you know, he he really loved the fact that he was part of that bridge between the two. I couldn't imagine standing here as a father to see the culmination of your work, his effort, to see your son standing on the world's biggest stage in motorsports. I, I almost couldn't, wouldn't be able to grasp that until I'm a dad now. What was, even now, what does that mean to you? You know, as a father, um, you, you know, you're, you're obviously very proud and, and when you reach a height that you didn't expect to reach or your son to reach. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty emotional, you know, it really is. And, uh, um, you know, we were fortunate to do it with, with like-minded people. And so they, they knew what I was going through, uh, you know, as, as a competitor, but then also as a father and a dad. And uh, um, it, it, it was magical. I mean, there's, uh, there's no other word to, to describe it. I mean, we landed in a place that you know, him and I both dreamed of landing someday. Um, you know, was it a realistic dream? Probably not. Not, not, not what we did. Um, but to see his hard work and effort, and you know, the sacrifice he made. Um, you know, put him out there as one of 33 uh, race car drivers to get to start this event was, uh, you know, it was pretty emotional. Look at that. Yeah, what, is, what does that mean to you? So, you know, it's interesting when we, you know, when we first walked out here, um, I'll never forget the first time in 2012 that I looked up at the board and the 39 was on top of it. And, uh, you know, with that, you know, comes, you know, a satisfaction, right? Yep. Um, yep. Um, and uh, I mean, I remember to this day standing right over there and, uh, and looking up. And uh, you know we you know fast forward a few years, and uh, of course we lose Brian, and uh, you know like the rest of the racing community did, uh, 
this place just swept us up. And, uh, you know, at uh, lap 100, it was, you know, green and BC and his logo. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if they've ever done that for anybody else. But, you know, when you talk about the father piece of it, there's a lot of race car drivers that have raced through here and, and have sadly lost their life. Um, you know, I'm pretty damn proud that there's one that the Speedway, you know, thought so much of that they were going to honor him um, during their greatest, uh, you know, their greatest event. You know, and now we, we, we come out here that to do something that, that, you know, Doug and Brian dreamed up on a old makeshift dirt track for, uh, you know, that they did for Tony Stewart to celebrate his retirement. And, uh, you know, we come out here and this is what it's become. You know, it's impactful. Um, you know, the racer in me, um, you know, I'm like, wow, you know, because you don't see this anywhere. Uh, the dad in me is so proud that, that his impact and touch to the sport was more than what he did out there. You know, it's the way he carried himself. Um, it's the way that his big picture thinking, I talk about that day out there in the dirt track, you know, Doug, and he wanted to run a race. And, uh, and there was some pretty good money on the line. And if I'm being honest, Brian was probably gonna be the favorite to take it. And, uh, and but it was Brian that you know, went and grabbed Doug and said, hey, wait a minute. You know, if you, we ever wanna do this for real, let's wait. You know, we've had this magical day out here. You know, it ain't about the money. Every one of us want to be the first to win at IMS on the dirt. And I'm no different, but let's do it right. You know, let's do it right. But to watch Doug and Brian kind of walk out towards where they're racing tonight and, uh, and kind of point, and you can see Brian going this, and they turn around and they're like, well, this. Honestly, as a father, like, to see my son building something in the moment with the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, um, who has since become a dear friend of ours in, in Doug Bowles. Uh, I mean, it's, it's incredible. How can I not mention Taylor? Her strength and her dedication to carry on your family's legacy and, and, and do what she does and the selflessness of doing that Gosh. Well, and, you know, and I'm not sure if she talked about it much, but, you know, with Brian's career and where, you know, how young he started and the opportunities that came his way, you know, as a family, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of our time and effort went into that. And, you know, but we still, you know, Taylor was still there doing her thing and playing soccer and, you know, and, you know, she got recruited to a D1 school playing soccer, but yet, Everything we did as a family revolved around Brian, and uh, you know, and, and you know, Brian had been off racing in New Zealand and Australia. Well, you know, Taylor got pregnant with Carter, and uh, you know, and Brian, I remember him coming to me one time, and, and this was early in 2016. He said, "Dad, you and Mom need to come to New Zealand this year because um, this will be my last time." And he says, "Because I want to be home now that I'm going to have a nephew. Um, you know, I want to be here for that. I want to be here for Christmases, and I've spent enough time over there." So finally, there was this light that, it, that we, right or wrong, always you know, had over Brian in his career. Well, that light was now starting to shift to his little sister and her life and things she was doing. And, uh, you know, and, and things were moving that way. And, and then you know, August you know, 6th, the accident happens and we lose Brian on the 7th. And all of a sudden, for her world, the light is back over here. And, uh, for her, I don't know how she does it, honestly. Um, not just from being a sister, but, you know, from, from the, our family dynamics and, you know, with, with Brian, who Brian was, and we still see it to this day. Um, but for then her take that moment and turn it into what, you know, a lot of people, you know, they talk about Brian's racing and his career and his legacy in the sport. And, and there is that, there is that piece of it. But what Taylor has helped create is her brother's legacy for a lifetime. For generations, this will have an impact on humanity. And, uh, you know, and Brian made, Brian made the choice to be an organ donor, and I'm, I'm so proud of that. Um, 
but she made the choice to carry that decision on to the benefit of so many. I mean, it's in the thousands. And I, I mean, I don't tell her near enough, um, but just how proud I am of her, absolutely. You know, we get to live our life in moments, right? And Brian, in 27 years, he lived three lifetimes of moments. He truly did. Um, I trade them all back to have him standing here right now with me, but, uh, but he did. But the gift that he gave was so others could have their moments and more moments. And, uh, you know, I'm so, so proud of that.